So tonight it's all about the beautiful and talented Maria Brink of In This Moment here on Loudwire Nights. We're calling this The Mother Interview, which is the name of their upcoming album, which will be out this summer. Welcome to the show, Maria. Thank you, as always, for your time. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate being here with you guys. My pleasure. I'm about to bombard you with mother questions. So are you ready for it? Yes, yes. All right, here we go. Let's start at the beginning. Um, did you already know what kind of record slash sound you wanted post-ritual? Or how do albums get fleshed out for you creatively? Like, as we do the music, you know, it, like things just start happening. Or Sometimes I'll actually have a direction before we go in to even do the album and because I feel like um, I do almost like storyboards, <laughs> like when you're in school, you know, it's like um, I create like a name of something and then like an energy and like a bunch of photos, like a bunch of forest pictures or a bunch of like things that kind of make me think of what the title of the album would be. So that way when people go to like write the songs and we're all working together, we're all kind of in this tone I guess you would say mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. so that's kind of how I do it in the beginning so I'll get some sort of inspiration or direction and then we kind of create like a, an atmosphere for that and we kind of go from there so it all kind of inspires itself do you remember by any chance any of the things that were on that storyboard for this I mean yeah totally I could put up just a lot of like visual inspirations like you know forests or like women a bunch of women in veils in the woods i know i have like a photo like that mm -hmm. or like queen elizabeth is in that pictures of mother mary are in there um you know just basically anything that i I'm, I'm always searching for inspiration and and searching for something new and something intriguing you know cuz it's it's art and i try not to be complacent in what i'm in and i try to like always want to expand so i'm just always kind of searching for stuff Okay, okay. Where did the majority of the work on the record take place and who all was involved in the process outside of members of In This Moment, of course? Basically, we've recorded, we've been recording forever. We do everything with Kevin Churko and Kane Churko, who are based out of um, Los Angeles. We've been going there our whole careers with them. They're based, they're kind of like our other band members, <laughs> honestly. Sometimes if we have guest singers, which we do have on this album, mm. but I don't believe I'm allowed to to say yet, yeah, but ooh, there is some really exciting stuff happening on this album. Jeez. And I think it's going to be like, people are going to be like, oh, like jaw dropping. And not because of me, because of some of the special guests that I got. But sometimes they don't always come into Vegas to record. They may have to record their vocals somewhere else, you know. But so we do have special guests. I can't say yet who, but Basically, it all happens there. I start writing at home in Albany, obviously. And on tour, we write a little bit. I'm the only one who really likes to write on tour, but tour is also a lot of hard work, and it's, it's not always easy to find time for that, you know? Yeah, I hear Yeah. So I'm going to follow up. You can yes or no me, but special guest one, two, three, number, anything? There's actually four. Oh, that's a lot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. right. And it's very special, yeah. So. Cannot wait. Okay. Uh, everybody always wonders <laughs> about the name of the album. So Mother Maria, why did you go with Mother? I mean, to me, it just has so many beautiful meanings. You know, it's, it's the giver of life and it can be looked at in so many different perceptions and in different ways. You know, Mother, obviously, in the literal sense, but there's like Mother, mother Earth, Mother Goddess my actual mother, I am a mother. I mean, the list goes on forever. It's kind of just this feminine power kind of deity, you know, deity, deity. How do you say that word correctly? Deity or deity? I don't know, but I know what you mean. Uh, you don't know what I mean? You know what I mean? Say it fast and like nobody will yeah, know. Um, yeah, it's like this, this vast <laughs> empowerment. And I'm always about empowerment and love. And, and I thought it would be beautiful to kind of embrace this powerful you know energy and that and that word just has so many different meanings to me and just has such this strength to me um on so many different levels that I just I want to and the funny thing is all my fans call me mother maria mm -hmm. which actually you know inspiring kind of that name because they all call me that and at first I was like oh I don't I'm not sure if I like that you know I just I didn't know how I felt about it and the more I heard it, it was like something about it was like you know that when I think of that word and just it's the most sacred thing to me. It's sacred in general on so many levels. So it just, it, it just worked. 
Totally. And it's such a huge compliment. Like when your fans call you Mother Maria, that's like the person that I look up to. Like, that's what I want to be. Like, that's so it's it it is a beautiful thing. It's beautiful. Yeah. And it's like, but it's like, you know, such a I don't know. It sounds so, you know, I just yeah, I love them so much. And (laughs) I, I, I accept it and I embrace it. And, you know, it's just I want to inspire and I want to empower and. I want people to be filled with that, a strength in them when they listen to us. Something about it, for some reason, makes them feel strong. And they want to put their chest up, you know, empower themselves yeah. a bit and feel that. And that's important to us. And so if this is the role I have to take to create that with these beautiful strangers who become our family, then I'll accept it. You absolutely do that. If I, if I may speak for the fans, you absolutely do that. <laughs> At what point in the process do the visuals start coming to you? Because as anyone who's seen in this moment live note, which I just did, by the way, at Sonic Temple, so amazing. Um, We all know that production visuals and outfit changes are such a huge part of what you do. So like, when do the visuals start coming to you? I think it's just part of like that same with that storyboard. I was talking to you about that whole conceptual board that I do. There's always a live part to it like a visually live while I'm listening to the songs you know because it has to start with the music because you know you have to take away all the layers all the props all the wardrobe what we look like what's happening and strip all of that away and the music itself has to be first and that has to be like you know does it give me goosebumps does it make me feel a certain way just just hearing the music in the dark with no visual and then when that starts happening and that magic starts happening then I start to try to start bringing in, you know, in my mind, like, colors for the live show. Because I even, like, pick the colors for each song for each show and mm-hmm. go over the lighting. I kind of do, like, directing for the whole live show as well. And I'll sit in pre-production and pick colors and outfits and just, I don't know. It's like my mind does not shut off. <laughs> That's awesome. And I am just a really creative, uh, passionate person. And I have, I'm OCD, and so I have an obsessive nature in certain ways, which is why I have to, like, do yoga and work so hard on peace and really create these, like, calm sanctuaries in my life everywhere I go, everywhere I am, because I do have this obsessive neuroticness to me that is continuously working and thinking of the next, like, right now I'm not happy with our live show. We're a month in and it's a new tour. But like certain things aren't working in certain areas. So it's always kind of a work in process. And my mind is hard to slow down. So that's why I'm a hippie. I can imagine that. Balance the crazy. Yeah. I can imagine that when Mother Maria is not happy, uh, no one is happy. Just just an observation, I would think. (laughs) I will say, though, my crew, I mean, yeah, they'll be bummed if I'm not, you know, happy. But I must say I have a phenomenal crew. And. The truth is about all these acts out here that you see that are, you know, doing things, especially more theatrical acts like us or like, you know, Zombie or Manson or certain, like even Vegas or whatever. Those people cannot do what they do without their crew. So we do love our crew deeply and we have meetings all the time. And I really try to get them into my brain to understand my vision so that they can help me make us come. But it's hard, it's hard work, you know? And so we have things go wrong. I trip and fall or lights fall over, but at the end of the day, we're all big teams trying to make it work. We were talking about your team and how obviously you don't just like go on stage and all of this magic happens on your own. So we were kind of talking about that backstage no. after the show. Who do you rely heaviest on? Would you say on your team? You know, it's really just like, it's like a giant machine and all of the parts are very relevant and they really, really are important, you know? So I really think it's it's equally balanced out And when it comes to our, our touring crew, you know, because you have a touring manager or your production manager, these people, but the stage manager, I mean, they all have working parts and they all have to work together. Bogs and fans and props and wardrobes and performers. We have eight people on stage, like everything has to be very precise and very mapped out and flow together seamlessly or we're colliding or people are tripping. Mm -hmm. Um, This is why we have to do weeks of time uh, of pre-pro before. So, so I rely on all of them equally. Honestly, it's, we're kind of like a unit. 
<laughs> Teamwork <laughs> makes be. the dream work. Totally. I believe that. Honestly, it does. It does. It does. In terms of sound, was there any experimentation going on? Any sort of shift that will surprise long-term fans? Like, what can you tell us about the sound? I think there's definitely some surprises in there. And I think it's the next step for, for us and for me. And I think that there's a... Um, an artistic maturity I think in it and in the sound and in my voice even I it almost sounds like my voice kind of has this next kind of level to it like there's a strength I think I am proud definitely of my vocal performance on this next album maybe more so than I ever have been so I'm really excited about that and and there's a lot of um special things in there that yeah I don't I think it's we always we're so experimental so Mm -hmm. I think anyone who knows us knows we're just kind of crazy we'll just take a right turn wherever we feel like it and just kind of do whatever we want but I think that that this has that and it will be surprising to people on different levels for sure expect the unexpected is the in this moment way so more of that to come exactly yeah (laughs) totally as we pour it easy so I'm always trying to Yeah, love it. Love it. As we all know, in this moment, six albums in soon to be seven with Mother. And you all have you've mentioned uh, have like the highest sales you've ever had. You're getting the biggest offers you've ever had. What's the next big goal for you in terms of like, in this moment, world domination, I guess? You know, we always talk about that. Like, you know, what's the ultimate goal? What's the ultimate? um, because we're so grateful where we are right now and we're so lucky that we are six albums in Mm -hmm. and it's the strongest we've ever been we're like this weird backward band like you know because like a lot of our peers and friends kind of zone by us and way to the top and then we slowly kind of work our way up and we continuously have and now we're like back up there with them like all right we're here you know and we're like keep going and so we're really you know we're really grateful that where we are in our career we are at the strongest and it has we are at that top level for where we wish we could be I think it you know being the headliners at the festivals and we do headline some festivals right now but not the biggest of them all that's probably one of a an accomplishment that I would love to be able to have you know to maybe get a Grammy someday maybe that would be something that could be cool you know Um, I think those are just things that all musicians kind of probably strive for you know you want to be at the top of your game. But at the same time, there is something really beautiful just playing giant, beautiful theaters as well. You know, I mean, arenas are awesome. We love being in arenas and they're special in a different way too, but I don't know. World domination, basically. You're right. That's the, I that's want the it final. all. I want it all. <laughs> that's the final result. You deserve it <laughs> that's all. That's Um, people always ask, what advice would you give your younger self? Right. But looking back at Maria 15 years ago when she was just getting started, what were some of the things that she was doing right that have stayed with you throughout your career and your evolution uh, becoming this powerhouse of the woman you are today? Um, what did I do right back then, you're saying? Yeah, like, what stuck with you? Like, okay. instead of looking back and being like, Right, because uh, you do so many things wrong. Right. Yeah, I know, so many things I did wrong. But I think one thing I did right was definitely had a lot of insecurities in life and a lot of struggles and all that stuff. But I did have this everlasting belief in, like, this dream that I have, this you know, this accomplishment that I want to do, that I am meant to sing, I'm meant to perform, um, and that I have this big dream that I want to really succeed at to be able to take care of my family. And they're kind of like the drive for it all for me and which keeps me strong and motivated. And I think that those two things is what I I, I think I did right because I kept failing over and over again, God knows. <laughs> uh, but no matter what, I kind of keep picking myself back up and kind of don't let things defeat me. So that little fire within me, I guess, is the one, holding on to that is the one right <laughs> thing I did. Didn't didn't let people tell me what I can and can't do, I guess. Still burning. Love that. All right. Here's the million dollar question. How much longer do we have to wait for new in this moment music? I don't even know. They have not given me the release date yet for the album. How about a new song? So there it's, 
it's up there because we're trying to pick right now um, between all the fans. As I told you, there's some really special wow factors in there. So mm -hmm. they're trying to pick. But I don't think it'll be – I think personally it'll be late summer. But I don't know exactly right now. Okay. All right. It might be mid-summer, a, sing a singles out. Um, so right around there somewhere. All right. We'll just throw out there that if you wanted to go early summer, like none of us are going to complain just in case you wanted to do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I don't want to take, love that. Yeah. I don't want to take too much more of your time. Many thanks to Maria Brink, front woman for In This Moment, their seventh studio album, Mother, out this summer at some point. And now we just wait for our taste of new music. So thank you so much for your time, Maria, as always. We thank you so much. Thank you for a wonderful interview. And we look forward to seeing you and talking to you again. Too. Same. We love you. Thank you. Bye-bye. We love you. Have a beautiful day. Bye.